I know I said that the plan was to take a break from one frustrating horror game, but I'm kind of impatient on making myself mad, apparently. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, one thing that I think is kind of important to the hobby of gaming is being financially stable to actually own games. Most of the time, games are up to $60, or you can pre-order those titles for like a 20 buck upcharge and then be miserable because you got it early and it's as obviously as polished as a piece of coal. So I figured I would look on Steam because I am a part of the PC Master Race to try and find good free games for others to enjoy. Of course, most free games on Steam aren't huge, but some games are like Grimm's Hollow, for example. They're short, but engaging with their story and gameplay mechanics that you can really enjoy. In the year of 2020, I actually did, was it 2020? In the year of 2021, I actually did a review on a game called Boodunit, which was a cute game. If you're interested in watching that review, there is a link in the top right corner for your ease of access. Now, the game I chose today is called Short Horror Story, made by Maselli Art. I hope I pronounced that right. And here is the description for the game right from the developer's mouth. As the title says, the game is a short horror story about a lone traveler who encounters a mysterious visitor in a calm desert night. From there, what appears to be a simple traveler's story begins to develop into a terrible reality. From there, the previously calm and peaceful night becomes a game of life and death in a labyrinth abandoned mine. And horror SPS made in two weeks, short horror story is a non-linear horror tale that develops in a creepy shooter game. Two weeks is a very impressive time to make a game. I will admit I've never made a game, so maybe it's not, but to me, it is very, very impressive. So why did I pick this one? I'll be honest, the art style looked cool and it was free, so I downloaded it. Basically, when I downloaded it, I had some high hopes that I would enjoy it, even if it was just for the art style. Problem is that art can only carry a game so far for me now. Ever since I started to play games more and more, it makes me picky, and it shouldn't be. I just kind of want to go back to being a dumb artist that plays video games sometimes, not some sweaty nerd playing video games all night, but I guess it's kind of too late and I sort of ruined it for myself. When opening the game, I was impressed by how it looked. The art style being this dark and pixelated just reminded me of watching YouTube videos back in 2008 if it was dark and you couldn't see anything because of all the artifacts. So videos like uh, Marble Hornets or really anything scary had these pixelated artifacts that were all over and it, it made it feel nostalgic. Though I was playing without my context so it did give me a little bit of a headache, I'm not gonna lie there. So maybe wear your glasses or contacts if you're playing this game or maybe you should when you're playing any game, I just don't like wearing my contacts all the time because it's kind of like wearing a bra. You just gotta shake it off when you get home. So I got in and immediately got startled by the loud horse noises, <coughs> then named the horse Horus, and he is my best friend forever. When you start the game, you're teleported to be standing in front of a creature of the Black Lagoon, sadly displaced thanks to global warming and the issue with pollution in our waters and you're requested to inspect it by pressing E. You promptly pass out and wake up in what I assume was the past. You get to hang out with Horus and are told how to control the game. Seems simple enough, but here's where my frustrations start. You are told you have to aim your gun, then unaim it, and then load the thing so you can fire. Like, if you just click R to reload it, you won't. I tried it over and over again, and through the 30 minutes of gameplay, this stupid gun would not reload unless you took it out to admire it first. But back to our short horror story. You are charged by the creature, and you end up shooting it to protect the boy, and pass out. From what I gather then, you are brought back to the present after you shot and killed the creature, and go to return to the campsite, which admittedly was hard to figure out, because I couldn't see the fire and since it cut to where you were supposed to go to find the body because you left your campsite to chase the creature for some reason, you have no idea where it is. 
or where it implies you need to go. I kind of just followed, like, bounced around and kept being told, return to the story. Return to the story. It's probably just gonna be like, return to the story. Dumbass, just get back to the story. Once you make it back to camp, our boy Horus is gone. And I was devastated. Except, no, I wasn't, because for some reason it first never occurred to me that the blood trail could have been from our dear horsey companion. It probably took me about 15 minutes to realize, oh shit, I think that blood's the horses. <laughs> and that was when it was too late. Can't believe the government, government lizard people do this to my baby. For some reason, they killed my damn horse, which is all I cared about. So, we end up following the blood trail. Several times we act like we're about to pass out again, as it leads to some random mine entrance. And we find an abandoned lamp. The lamp, you can turn on and it will have this passive glow that follows you around, or you can hold Q to pull out and see more. This was my second gripe with the game. I had to hold down WSD to move, like most games, and if I wanted to see anything, I needed to also hold down Q. So usually I was pressing down a bunch of buttons and randomly plunging myself into darkness, and since I am so slow, sometimes it took me a good minute to realize that you can't hold the lamp and reload the gun. Thankfully, you can shoot your shitty little pistol while carrying the lamp out at least. Now, some people could possibly have an issue with how much the lamp takes up the screen, but I actually didn't really notice it too much. I feel like it added to the ambiance, but then you go inside the mine cave to see a bunch of bodies and are told to run. You run out the cave and then you have this cutscene where you're like dragged back into the cave but not actually because you're back outside the cave where the FPS aspect of the game comes into play. You get to stand around and shoot these creatures while you are looking for your best buddy Horus. Oh we're killing things. Now this is the part of the game where certain aspects shine brightly and the others just made me want to scream. The art style excels in the caves. The art makes you feel much more enclosed and claustrophobic than you would originally think, even in such an enclosed space. And then when you pull out the lamp, it increases the feeling of being in a small space with little room because it takes up so much of the screen, which is why I enjoy the lamp doing what it does, because not only is it helpful, but it also makes it feel different. However, what brings this experience down is the gun. I am trying to avenge my horse, Horus, with a barely functional pistol that has no indicator on how much ammo it can hold or if it's ready to fire because you have to click twice to fire, once to cock the gun and then once to shoot. I shot him. I reloaded. Everybody saw that. Like, there are several instances where I tried to prepare to shoot before I actually come across any enemies and just shoot the gun. Thankfully, this has no negative effect on the game or attracts enemies, or I would have stopped playing within like 10 minutes instead of 30. When you have a game that is all about shooting a gun, you should have it a little more refined, or at least have some kind of counter showing how much ammo is in the gun, things like that. I didn't have a clue you could load more than one bullet into the gun. I assumed it was a one and done thing and that was it. But you can load like six bullets into the clip, even though it takes forever to do that. And you can see this clip right here where I find out and I'm kind of furious. Am I going to develop anger issues because of video games? Probably. Listen, I barely use guns. I have shot them a few times in my life, God bless America, but even I can load a gun faster than our game's protagonist. And I'm not sure what gun he's using, but I am assuming our protagonist is a cowboy of some sort, so that means it's most likely a revolver of some sort, and it should not take me three minutes to completely load every bullet into this gun. Seriously. My main gripe about this game is the gun. I have a small list of pros and cons I wrote out to try and think out the good and the bad, and the con list is just gun. I would just prefer if the gun had at least a little number in the bottom corner that said like zero out of six to show me how many bullets I had, and don't say it will ruin the immersion. This game is all pixels. You will survive if there is a reload counter that makes it at least a little easier to manage. All in all, if I wasn't developing anger issues from playing video games, like I get a violent rush of testosterone that will fill me with rage anger issues, then I would probably have been able to enjoy the game 
for longer than I did. But this game is really impressive for a two week development time and I wish I could have gotten into it more. But the gun is a struggle to get a hang of. If you have more patience and less issues than me, I'm sure that it is a really fun game. Like I said, the art style excels at making the most of its setting. And I can maybe even slightly forgive the developers for what they did to Horus, but I cannot get over this gun and its mechanics since it's like one of two gameplay mechanics. I just wish it was a little different. All in all, out of the three games I've played, this one is middle of the road. I'll probably give it 5 out of 10 creatures from the Black Lagoon. I want to do this more. I'm actually interested in finding the guys games we can all enjoy for cheap especially in this world's economy if you're interested in the game it will be in the comments and the description so maybe give it a shot yourself since it is free and if you're interested in subscribing please do only seven percent of people who see my content are actually subscribed it's free and it helps me out so much i'll see you guys in the next video bye titles uh, for uh, blah, 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 blah. The, 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 I forgot how hard it is reading scripts. <laughs> if you want, because you're a fancy bitch. No, I can't say that. No, I can't swear the first eight seconds. <laughs> a peaceful night becomes a game of life. <laughs> and horror FPS. I don't know why I said it like that, but I'm reading it straight from the developer. So. Oh no, why did I write this? Oh no, this is gonna be hard to read. I feel like it added to the ambiance. What do I say? It's so fancy. The ambiance. The thing at these creatures. Tori, I just wrote this. Why do I forget writing shit? Okay, and it makes it easy. And don't say it will ruin the immersion. All in all, for a free game, I've. For all in all, all in. Mm -hmm. I really want to do this more. I'm actually. Stop hitting the mic stand, dumbass.